Good day! We are group 3 presenting the rubber balloon method. Rubber balloon method is a common method to find the soil's field density. It is a cheap, simple, and quick method that does not require any additional material. Soil has different densities in general. Field density is the average density of a sample and it is often used in geotechnical engineering to find out how much load a certain volume of a soil can support without overloading it. A high field density means that there are more compact particles like sand, gravel, whereas low field density means that there are more porous particles like silt or clay. The rubber balloon method is mainly used for soils with a high field density and an uneven distribution of particles. This method is often used in the construction industry, so people will often have soil samples from construction sites. The rubber balloon method is based on the difference in buoyant force between a rubber ball and water. The rubber ball has a small airspace inside that gives it less buoyant than water and therefore floats. If you put the rubber ball in a container of water, it sinks to the bottom. The buoyant force keeps the rubber ball afloat at all times because it is never submerged. In similar fashion, soil has an airspace inside that gives it low buoyancy. This means that when soil is wet, it sinks to the bottom. For a given density of particles, there are always an amount of water that can be added until material materials completely submerges. During the past several years, Soils investigations by the IOA Engineering Experiment Station have included in-place density measurements at a large number of locations in and out of the state. It was often desired to extend these measurements to depths of tens of feet in the soil materials, quarries, and road cuts, and it became almost a necessary convenience. However, the common existing disturbed methods of density measurement, the oil, the sand cone and the rubber balloon methods are all adapted to measurements on a level surface. On a vertical face or a steeply sloping face, this required an undesirable amount of hand excavation and therefore a new apparatus was designed. The desirable features in the new apparatus were that it be equally adapted for use on level, sloping or vertical faces and that it be light and handy enough to be operated by one person hanging on a rope swing. A modified rubber balloon apparatus was designed and constructed to meet these requirements. During the trial and development period of two years, many modifications have been made, and some rather unique features have been incorporated. The apparatus has been used and tried in various soils in the United States and Alaska. It is now used by the experiment station for all field density tests, including those on level surfaces. It is one of the methods used to find the unit weight of soil in field after compaction. The test is carried out with a rubber balloon filled with water and with a calibration vessel. After compacting the soil in field, the small hole is excavated. Take the weight soil excavated in field and find moisture content in the soil. So for the significance and use of the method. The rubber balloon method is one way for determining the soil's unit weight in the field following compaction. It is often used as a basis of acceptance for earthen material compacted to a specific density or percentage of a maximum density determined by a test method, such as test methods D698, D1557 or D4253. This method is not only effective and cheap, it is also less time consuming rather than that of the sand cone method. As the volumeter is simple to operate and the volume can be measured more quickly, it is, it is suitable for all types of soils except those with large quantities of heavy gravel. Thus, it is a good field based method used in most kinds of soils to determine the density. The rubber balloon method measures the compressive strength of a soil specimen in material testing. A rubber balloon is filled with the soil specimen, which is then compressed until it breaks. The specimen's highest compressive force is noted and utilized to calculate the compressive strength. This test technique should be strictly followed 
the specimen size and form should be standardized and the test sample should be taken from the same batch and location of the material. Inorganic, saturated, or high plastic soils that would deform at the pressures used in this test are not suitable for this test method. Additionally, using this test method on specimens made up of unbound granular materials that won't maintain stable sides in a small hole, soils that contain more coarse material than 37.5 millimeters, granular soils with high void ratios, or film materials made up of particles with sharp edges may call for extra caution. The apparatus needed for this method are the balloon density meter, the rubber ball pump, a density plate with fasteners, the soil agar, rubber balloons, a moisture tight container, a weighing balance, and a drying oven. These are the steps for testing the rubber balloon method to determine the field density of soil. First step is prepare a flat and smooth dirt surface. Next is use the provided fasteners to fix the density plate to the prepared surface. The plate shouldn't move while the test is being conducted. Step 3. Place the balloon density meter precisely over the hole in the density plate that has been provided. Next is pump water into the balloon that is placed to the bottom of the density meter by inserting the rubber bulb pump into the control valve. Step 5. Once the water level in the density meter has dropped to its lowest, lowest point, water is pumped into the device. Record the reading's initial volume in your notes. Take note of that. Step 6. After taking the initial volume reading, flip the rubber bulb pump over and reposition the water. Next is the Next is remove the density meter and use an, an auger or trowel to dig a hole. The diameter and depth of the hole should be at least 4 and 5 inches, respectively. Next is the entire amount of the hole's excavated soil needs to be gathered in a container that is mo moisture tight and its weight should be me measured as it is needed to calculate the soil's water content. Step 9 is use a rubber ball pump to pump water into the balloon while it is above the hole that has been excavated. Next is record the reading at, as the final volume when the water level had reached its lowest point. And finally, using a rubber ball pump linked to the control valve on its vacuum side, raise the water level to its original state. So, after finding out all of the variables by doing all of the procedures, we are to compute our weight of the soil excavated or denoted as W and the volume of the hole excavated by V is equals to V1 minus V2. V1 and V2 are the initial volume reading of the balloon density and the final volume reading of the balloon density. Then we are to compute our field density or the wet density of the soil by the equation gamma is equals to the weight of the soil excavated over the volume of the hole excavated. Then, for our dry density, we are to use the formula gamma sub D is equals to gamma over 1 plus the moisture content of the excavated soil. And as a result, we are to get our field density of the soil in newtons per meter cube. That is all. Next is the precision and the bias of the method. The precision of this test method is operator dependent and a function of the care exercised in performing the steps of the procedure giving particular attention to careful control and systematic repetition of the procedure used. No standard soils exist for determination of the overall precision of this test method under field conditions. While no formal round robin testing has been completed, it is estimated by subcommittee D18.08 from experience that the results of two properly conducted tests performed by a skilled operator on the same material at a given time and location should not differ by more than approximately 1 pound per feet cube or 1.6 kilogram meter cube. Tests performed by unskilled operators on the same material would be expected to yield substantially greater differences. 
Therefore, this standard test method has no determinable bias since the values obtained can only be defined in terms of the test method. The summary and conclusion. How is the method overall? The method is an effective way of determining the soil's unit weight in a field after being compacted. It is an efficient and simple to conduct method. Although inorganic, saturated, or high plastic soils that would deform at the pressure used in this test and also soils containing crushed rock fragments or sharp edge materials cannot be used in this method. For other soils, it is an effective method. The rubber balloon method is effective and efficient to perform. It is not applicable to all soil types. As the balloon membrane may puncture during testing, it is recommended to check the soil carefully. If there are large quantities of coarse and sharp elements in the soil, it is also recommended to carefully recover all excavated materials for accurate testing. Having memorized the procedure and preparing all apparatus beforehand will make the method more efficient. Thank you and have a good day.